Hello, everybody. Happy day 24 of the challenge. Of course, today is Thanksgiving here in America. So happy Thanksgiving to all of the Americans and happy Friendsgiving to all of our friends in other countries who uh, don't celebrate this holiday. And to all the Americans who are perhaps stationed in other countries for work, I want to extend a very special Thanksgiving out to you multiple times, multiple Thanksgivings. I have either been in Europe or in in, uh, India. And I know how it can kind of sting a little bit when um, you're not in a country that celebrates the holiday and you know all of your friends or fam and family are back home celebrating today. So I wanted to extend a very heartfelt happy Thanksgiving, especially to every person out there who is not able to participate in this holiday that is very American and, and a holiday that is part of our culture. With that being said, I did, as I told you guys yesterday, I did put Thanksgiving into the challenge. Um, so let's go back and look at this again. And so my hope was, especially for our friends who are not, um, who are not Americans, sorry, I'm trying to pull, drag the screen over and it's not letting me drag. Anyway, um, for our friends who are not Americans, I was hoping that by observing this, you would be able to kind of be more informed for the holidays coming up because globally for us in the Western world, we do have Christmas coming up soon. And so that's a really big holiday. And even though holidays are fun and exciting, they can be very, very, very stressful as well. And so especially since this whole Great Awakening started. So I wanted to incorporate our friends who are not Americans into this as well, just to help have some preparation for the holidays that are to come. So for Thursday, November 24th, Happy Thanksgiving. Again, I will reiterate, this day, like many holidays, might require you to get up extra early to get your workout and journaling in. Please know that many people across the country are joining, joining you at dark 30, as we say in Ashtanga, to do their workout to keep themselves sane for the holiday. So I was up at four this morning. Um, a lot of people get up super early to start cooking. Did you guys, were you able to get up even earlier to get your workout in before you started to cook or perhaps had to travel today to get to your family's house, your parents' house or your grandparents' house or aunts and uncles' house. I know a lot of people get up really early in the morning to drive long hours to get to their the patriarch or the matriarch of their family's houses. I'm going to be at my aunt's house today. In a little while, I'm going to head out to her house. So um, were you able to work the workout in? Because this is super important. Um, and as I say in the next paragraph, if you have never gotten up early on a holiday to exercise, then this will be a new experience and challenge for you. I ask that you will try to try real hard not to skip your workout this morning. Today, we'll have less challenges due to the holiday, but your exercise is top priority, not just for your sanity, but also for your digestive system. Now, since there is a lot of eating at Thanksgiving, a lot of casseroles, a lot of rich heavy foods that we typically don't eat anytime except the holidays. Um, the exercise is going to really help your digestive system get the blood pumping in the morning before you start to ingest all that food. And so that's another another really important, important reason to, to make sure you do work out the morning of Thanksgiving. Make your bed up. Um, if you have to eat later than 7 p.m. today, that's okay. We want to be flexible on holidays, especially if you've been really good about that up till now. It's okay to be a little bit flexible on a holiday. And so your choices are either sweating to the oldies, kickboxing, or yoga. You want the five-minute cold shower, and then try to do 15 minutes of the on meditation to really help ground you. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving today, please don't worry about food journaling. I don't want you to stress about it today, especially if you've been food journaling this whole time. You now have a better idea of what foods are good for you and what foods are not good for you. But for a holiday, I just want you to relax and not worry about journaling your food. If you're not American and you want to journal, totally fine. But at Christmas time, I would suggest the same to everybody. Don't worry about journaling. All right, for food. But journaling for your emotions, I do want you to do that. But don't worry about the food journal. All right, so journal questions to ask yourself. Did you have to get up extra early to exercise? How did taking the time to exercise and meditate help you navigate the day? Did the exercise help your digestion? Were there any uncomfortable situations you were in today? How did it go? Did you handle these situations differently because of the work you're doing on yourself? If you're not an American, did you get to have a meal with friends? How did it go? If you're not an American, how did reading this challenge for the Americans inform you for the next holiday you have to experience? What did you observe from this? You might stay up later than 10 p.m. tonight, and that's okay. Allow yourself to have fellowship and community with your friends and family. Tomorrow, you can observe how this day affects you. So let's go ahead and talk about tomorrow, the 25th day, uh, Friday, November 25th. You might feel a little hungover today from all the food and maybe from the alcohol. Food hangovers, to me, are worse than 
alcohol hangovers. So start observing that if there are foods that make you feel hungover, maybe you, you weren't aware of that before now that foods can actually make you have a hangover too. Alcohol is not something I've addressed in this challenge as this is something that is on a person by person person basis and can be used in moderation. It is up to each individual to figure out what works for him or her with alcohol. Um, I still do drink. I don't drink daily. I only really drink at holidays. Um, so maybe I drink maybe two or three times a year. Right. And that's because I do work out so much. So, and I work all the time. I'm, I'm very, a very hard worker. So I am not someone that drinks daily. If you do and you can handle it, that's totally fine. But, um, but if you're someone that thinks that alcohol is just a no, no for you, totally fine too. That is totally up to you. All right. Um, so let me read that again. You might feel a little hungover tape today from the food and maybe from the alcohol. Alcohol is not something I've addressed in this challenge as this is something that is on a person by person basis and can be used in moderation. It is up to each individual to figure out what works for him or her with alcohol. However, food can definitely cause a hangover, especially if you're eating foods that you're not used to eating on a daily basis. This is not something to be upset about if this is something you only experience the day after a holiday. Okay, so don't worry about it. If you have that one day after a holiday where you have a bit of a food hangover, it's no big deal, okay? Getting more in touch with your body will also make you more aware of how your body is reacting to food. Totally, that's the subtle body response. Today, we are going to work with this to help you explore more. Make your bed up. Your last meal should between, be between 5 and 7 p.m. No snacking after 7 p.m. This allows you, your digestive system, at least 12 hours to rest in between dinner and breakfast. If you're feeling bloated, or hungover from food, do not do yoga today. With an impacted colon, you could bruise your internal organs. Instead, do the 45-minute bar or 45-minute kickboxing to help flush yourself from the day before. So it's super important. If you are bloated or if you feel like you haven't properly like gone to the bathroom since eating all these rich foods, um, if your colon is impacted the day after Thanksgiving, I do not want you doing yoga, okay? Because if you're constipated or have an impacted colon, um, doing yoga could actually bruise your internal, internal organs if your colon is packed full of shit, basically, right? So I want you instead to do the bar or the kickboxing, something really sweaty to help flush your system, if that makes sense. Um, if you are absolutely too hungover to exercise, you can switch out today's exercise challenge with tomorrow, making today your rest day. Because of my disposition normally the day after a holiday i typically will rest i will typically give my body an opportunity to rest because i know how my body is with food um especially if i'm eating foods that are not i'm not used to eating okay and so that is absolutely up to you if you want to make your rest day this week friday instead of saturday you can totally switch the days totally up to you some people find it helpful to get right back into the exercise after a holiday that's absolutely fine too, just whatever works for you. So you can either do the 45 minute kickboxing or the yoga or the bar. All right, during your morning shower, try to make the water as cold for the last five minutes of your shower. Then do some Reiki meditation, especially post Thanksgiving, especially if you had some stressful situations with family and friends or if your digestive system is a little weak, please do some of the Reiki with Emmy to help, again, move the energy. Um, if you are off work today and have time, especially if you dealt with these intense family situations yesterday, take the time to also do sound bowl healing. Because I know a lot of Americans are off now until like Monday. Um, Thanksgiving is a really big holiday here in the United States. So we have a lot of people had yesterday off as well, Wednesday off as well. Usually you have like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then of course, the weekend off for the holiday. So if you're off of work tomorrow um, as an American, I would really take the time to do the Reiki and the Sambo healing just to kind of help you process every every emotion you felt on Thursday. Because, you know, in, in one day, you can have many emotions. You could be stressed out. You could be excited. You can experience joy. You can experience anger. You can experience anxiety. And that's sometimes what these holidays are. They can be kind of a clusterfuck of all sorts of different emotions. And so I really want you to take prior, uh, Friday as a priority to really rebalance yourself and take care of yourself from all the that you experienced the day before. So Friday, you're back to food journaling again. I want you to notice something. If you ate a lot Thursday, do you feel even more hungry on Friday? Because sometimes that happens. Like the less we eat, the more we watch what we eat, the less hungry we get. And then when we binge eat the next day, our stomach is hot. It's, it's a weird sensation. So I want you to really watch that tomorrow. All right, journaling for tomorrow. If you were up past 10 p.m. and ate past 7 p.m. yesterday, how did it affect your sleep? So now is a good time to observe what we were doing in this challenge where we were going to bed 
before 10 and we stopped eat we stopped eating before seven and so now your body's gotten into the rhythm of having that time to recuperate to heal to sleep and yesterday that you got thrown off because of the holiday so observe how you're feeling how what differences do you notice now is there an observation that you didn't notice before the challenge and now you're starting to see how the body reacts to different sleeping patterns different eating patterns because it's all about energy right eating sleeping everything is about energy can you explain the differences in how you felt before this challenge? Did timing ever enter your mind when you ate? How has not eating after 7 p.m. changed your life? How has going to bed before 10 p.m. changed your life? Was Thanksgiving a good tester to see how these steps in the challenge have changed you? What have you learned from the contrasting experiences? With the holiday, did any emotions come up you were not expecting? Can you cancel? Can you channel and explore those emotions through your workout meditations and journaling? What are these unexpected emotions trying to teach you? And then tomorrow night being Friday, you, you get your oil bath again, which will be really good if you have Thanksgiving to again help everything detox. So, um, and then you're going to bed early on um, Friday night. And then we'll look at Saturday tomorrow. So since today is Thanksgiving, I do want to share with you guys just for fun one of my family's uh, traditional casseroles. This is a very, very southern casserole that I'm going to share with you guys. And I'm going to encourage you down in the, the comment section below, share some of your family's dishes during Thanksgiving. Or if you're not from America, share with us a, a, a dish or something that's culturally from your neck of the woods. Because this pineapple casserole is super huge in the South. And it's one of my favorite dishes. And whenever I've ever ever gone to like a potluck even outside of holidays just for yoga shalas or whatever whenever i bring a pineapple casserole it is gone people love this now i looked this morning for my family's recipe my aunt debbie is the one who usually makes the pineapple casserole for my family but i couldn't find it so i found paula dean's recipe there's lots of recipes online but paula dean she's just as southern as they come so i trust her recipe so you need one cup of sugar six tablespoons of all-purpose flour two cups of grated sharp cheddar cheese um two 20 ounce cans and six tablespoons pineapple juice um reserved pineapple chunks, one cup made into crummy butter crackers, and eight table tablespoons melted, plus extra for greasing uh, the pan butter. All right, so with the, the crumbs, you're, we use Ritz crackers. So Ritz crackers is the good, really sharp crackers are good. And um, for those who are not Americans, just try uh, the tablespoons, the cups, the ounces, just translate that to your country's uh, measurement to know. All right, and so basically you preheat the oven to 350 Fahrenheit, grease the medium. Oh, looks like I lost some of the article here. Oh, shoot. My internet's a little bit wonky today. All right, I will put a link to this, this um, recipe down in the description box below. But basically a pineapple casserole, it's vegetarian. It's not vegan, but it's vegetarian. Make sure if you are a vegetarian that you're buying appropriate cheese, cheese that doesn't have like the liver in it. Um, it's you, you can see in the grocery store is vegetarian cheese. So sharp cheddar cheese, Ritz crackers, pineapple, sugar, butter. And you, you'll, I'll, again, I'm going to link this um, recipe down in the description box below. It's super easy to make. I am like the world's worst cook. I mean, I had to call my mother and ask her how to boil an egg. Like I am the world's worst cook. I'm not really interested in food. I'm not, I'm not a foodie. I'm Vata. I'm really just not a foodie. Um, and so I think the only thing that's ever going to ever motivate me to learn how to make something is if I ever had a kid. Um, but Pineapple casserole, I do know how to make because it is such a southern dish and it's so good. It is so freaking good. It's like it's like that combination of sweet and savory. It is one of the best casseroles and it's something great. You can use it too. I know a lot of people use pineapple casseroles as a breakfast dish as well. So if you have people coming over, spending the night at your house, and you want to make them a breakfast, a pineapple casserole is something really unique to serve for breakfast. Um, it's great for potlucks. It's great for me. A pineapple. If I just randomly make, sometimes during the year, I'll just like randomly make a pineapple casserole. And that will be my meal, will be like a bowl of pineapple casserole because it's so freaking good. And so I'm going to share that again in the description box below. If you are not from the South, because I'm telling you guys, even in America, like Southern food is very different from like people in the North, like New England, New York. We have very different cultures. Even though we're all Americans, we have very different cultures. And so the pineapple casserole is something, something that's very, very, very Southern. And so I'm really 
uh, curious to see if you guys who are not from the South, if you try to make this dish, what do you think about it? Because I, we're known for our food down here in the South, for sure. Even though I'm not a foodie, we are known for our food down here in the South. So again, I want to hear your recipe. So let me know some of your favorite recipes down in the comment section below. Let's share them with each other. I know on the signal group for the support group, everybody's been sharing recipes as well. So go ahead and share that. I am absolutely 100% a vegetarian. I'm not a vegan, but I am a vegetarian. Um, I know in my family, my family is fully aware of my uh, vegetarianism. And so they're very good at Thanksgiving to let me know like which dishes were used with beef bouillon cubes or vegetable bouillon cubes. And they're usually pretty aware of, of, of letting me know that before we sit down to eat. So, um, so just be mindful uh, with your friends if they are vegetarian or vegan to let them know the ingredients in a dish um, so that their diet their dietary choices are not disrupted. All right, you guys, once again, have a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving. Um, I will talk to you guys all tomorrow. I can't wait to see how you're feeling post-holiday. Bye, guys.